iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, which has the best camera setup. I'm gonna try and find out. I'll give you my thoughts along the way. I'd love to hear what you think. Drop a comment below. But first, let's look at some cinematic video. Okay, so this is cinematic mode on the iPhone and this is portrait video on the Samsung. Which you think is better? It should just be grabbing my face, giving you a nice, kind of professional bokeh blur behind me. Now on the 14 series, we now have 4K and also 24 FPS options. The Samsung still ends it to 1080p 30. I don't know how often you actually use this mode. What do you think? Between the two, best cinematic mode? I think it's this. Now, over the last week or so, I've probably taken, I don't know, like a thousand photos with these, and I've put some of the best examples, which I think illustrate the differences between the two cameras in this video. But before we get to the proper nitty gritty detailed side-by-side -side comparison, there are a few things that stuck out as I was actually using them. For example, screen brightness. Look at the difference between these two. The iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max now peak at a whopping 2000 nits when you're outdoors and it's bright, which means it is actually a little bit easier to frame and compose your photo compared to the S22 Ultra, which is still one of the brightest phones you can get, but the iPhone is just a little bit easier to use. But then when it comes to lens transitions, while you may not be doing this that regularly during video recording, you can clearly see the iPhone is smoother. And actually, I even noticed an improvement from the 14 coming from the 13. So if you are filming and you are switching between the lenses, the iPhone is noticeably smoother than the S22. Although, to his credit, the S22 does let you pause and then resume video recording, which you still can't do on the iPhone. Then, from a pure hardware perspective, the Samsung does have an extra lens. We have this periscope camera, which gives us a 10 times optical zoom. So while I will say the iPhone's zoom and telephoto quality has improved over last year, it still can't match the long range zoom that you get on the S22 Ultra. I think we were all a little bit disappointed after Apple's far out invitation that rather than getting some cool new astrophotography mode or periscope lens for long zoom, they just gave us the two times optical, which basically just uses a crop of that new 48 megapixel sensor to give you a 12 megapixel optical zoom. Also bear in mind that we are about halfway through the life cycle of the S22 series. Uh, obviously the Galaxy Fold is Samsung's new sort of mid-year refresh, but actually that never gives you quite the flagship cameras that the uh, top end S series does. So you could argue Apple has a six month advantage, but well, this is always gonna be the case. One advantage I have noticed with the iPhone is that we now have a faster shutter speed, which in some cases gives you a usable photo versus a non-usable photo. And finally, in terms of pricing, it is roughly the same. It depends where you live, because in the US, they didn't get the price hike with the iPhones like everywhere else did. So here in the UK, the iPhone is 50 pounds more expensive than the base S22 Ultra. However, don't forget that the iPhone 14 Pro, its smaller brother, shares the exact same camera setup. There is no difference between the camera. It's so actually, if you go for the Pro model, this is a little bit cheaper, but chances are 50 quid here or there is not gonna be the deciding factor. It's which ecosystem you prefer, what you're used to using. Although I can tell you now, they both have incredible camera setups and they actually share many of the same camera features, although to varying different levels of quality. So let's jump into a few portrait photos and straight away there's quite a significant difference. I mean, just look at the color to start with. It's a much cooler palette on the S22 across the board compared to the warmer iPhone 14. Interestingly, I mentioned this in my iPhone 14 Pro Max review I shared a few days ago that versus the 13 series, this was actually cooler and much closer to a Samsung kind of aesthetic than we had before with a flatter, warm look that you got with iPhones. Moving up to three times, which I still think gives you the best focal length of portrait shots. Again, the color difference is still there, particularly my skin tones and the jacket. You can also see the S22 generally has a wider field of view across most of the lenses. So at least with these portrait shots, there's definitely a theme of a cooler, more contrasty, heavier shadow kind of theme that we're getting with the S22. I do aesthetically prefer the iPhone 14 so far, but what do you think? Okay, I think it's lunchtime, which means Fuel time! These guys are very kindly sponsoring this video and I've been using these hot and savory meals as my lunches probably three or four times a week. 10 flavors, these are some of my favorites, although I have a lot of new pasta bolognese. This is one of the best ones, I think. Give it a good shake. Two good scoops. And actually that all together is just 400 calories, which for a lunch or even a dinner is great. So it's simple as boiling about 220 milliliters of water. It does say on the back of the packet how much you need. Pouring it in, like so, giving it a little stir, and then leaving for five minutes. 
So Huel Hot and Savory Meals give you 26 vitamins and minerals. I like to add a little bit of frozen veg, which I've microwaved to it. A little salt, a little pepper. And actually it's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's healthy. And it's really nice as well. So why not give Huel a try? I'll leave a link down below. You can check out the range of hot and savory meals and let me know which is your favorite flavor. I hate to draw attention to the back of my hairy leg. I'm really sorry, but you can see a lot more in the iPhone's photo of the chair, of my leg. You can see the outline of my shorts, whereas it's all just dark and hidden on the S22 shot. Now these guys work at my local Cafe Nero, which I go to every single day pretty much. And actually one of the new features on the iPhone is this foreground blur, because this is a portrait mode shot. It's just using the one times lens and there isn't a particularly deep backdrop, so you're not really getting a ton of bokeh, but we're seeing this foreground blur on the iPhone. If you look at the till for a portrait mode shot, you'd want it to be blurry. You want a background and a foreground blur. So in that regard, I prefer the iPhone, but also look at the t-shirts, the color, the shadows are just being crushed by the S22. Now, in the beginning, I talked about how the S22 Ultra is the zoom telephoto king, right? So at the extreme zooms, yes, the S22 is a clear winner, but anything up to 10 times, I'm finding that they're trading blows. Shots like this, I would say, are a clear win for the S22, but then look at these other ones. There is often more noise with the iPhone, but there's also a bit more detail there. A lot of the textures are lost on the S22. So altogether, I would say the S22 is still the zoom king, but the iPhone's catching up. And I think anything up to 10 times, it can go either way, but generally, I think it goes to the S22. This church scene is really interesting because it shows the difference of how the phones handle the dynamic range. The iPhone's exposure has prioritized the foreground, so we have a blown out sun with a lot less detail in the sky, whereas the S22 handles that much better, but the trade-off is we have a darker foreground. And here with the castle, I would say the S22's colors are much more realistic. There's definitely a warmer, flatter, yellowy vibe to the iPhone, Often, I would say, especially with skin tones, I do prefer the iPhone, but for this particular shot, I'm leaning towards the Samsung. Once again, we have those heavy shadows, the heavy contrast on the S22, losing some of that information in the dark areas. And I'd also say the S22 has gone overboard with the vibrancy and the saturation here. Sadly, my arms are not that brown. <laughs> but you can look at skies and buildings all day long. For me, it's skin tones, it's faces that are the real test and the real priority when it comes to a smartphone camera, at least for me. And between these two, I've got to give it for the iPhone. Although this is a textbook example of the new iPhone 14 series just going crazy with the sharpening. I don't know why. Maybe that's something we can fix in an update. Now switching to some nighttime shots and holy moly, we could spend a whole video talking about this one photo. There is so much going on from the detail on the back of uh, Andrew's shirt on the left side, sitting on the chair, to the fire. I mean, the S22 handles the bright highlights of the flames better. We can see more detail there, but the trade-off is we have this really distracting purpley blue light coming into the center and the lower left of the photo. And actually, if we jump to this next photo, wow, look at the difference in colors. Holy moly, I mean, no one looks good in this photo, unfortunately, they're gonna hate me for sharing this. The S22's white balance seems to actually be able to handle the bright orange flames a bit better. If I had to post one of these to Instagram or maybe play around with it in Lightroom, I would probably go with the S22's shot. As for macro shots, well, I think they both do a bloody good job, actually. I can see a little bit more fine detail of those rings on the iPhone shots, but you can't go wrong with either. Okay, switching things around to the selfie camera. And actually, this is one of the upgrades with the iPhone 14. We have a wider aperture and it now supports autofocus. And looking at these two, I think this is a classic iPhone look and a classic Samsung look. Which you prefer, and I guess this goes for the entire video, is subjective. Personally, while I do normally prefer a brighter image, I think the S22 looks a bit better there. What do you think? Okay, so we're not here for the next 10 years. Let me just wrap up some of my impressions of the main camera so far. And I would say, Generally, I'm leaning towards preferring the iPhone. It is close, they trade blows. The iPhone is generally brighter, warmer in its color tone, and also I think more detailed, although it can suffer with over sharpening. Whereas the S22, I would say is a little bit inconsistent with its colors. Sometimes it's way too cool, other times it oversaturates and then becomes really vibrant and too warm. And there's also a big difference in how they handle dynamic range, those bright highlights versus the deep shadows. Now this is being shot with the main rear cameras. Still at 4K30 on both. What do you think? Let me give you a little bit of a tour of the studio while you uh, analyze the two videos. This is my main workstation, as I'm sure you've seen if you're a regular on the channel. We have this little living room area over here with a big TV. 
And look at the difference in the lighting and the color of the sofa. That's really interesting, actually. Over here, this is where my brother Pete works. This is his little workstation. And then over here is where we do a bunch of our filming. Not all of it. I like to keep things a little bit varied, but we've got my big aperture light, some uh, matte backgrounds, an overhead tripod to get some top-down shots. So, what do you think? Which phone shoots better video in low light? Wow, okay, look at the difference there. I'm filming this with the front selfie camera in 4K on both. This is pretty tricky lighting though. We've got lots of Philips Hue going on behind me. We've got the tech chat neon sign. Neither are gonna look fantastic in this light, but between the two, what do you think? Which comes out on top? So which is best? Well, I can tell you they're both incredible camera setups. Also, this video is not sponsored by either of these. This is my own personal opinion, but more often than not, I pull out this, the 14 Pro Max, or by extension, the 14 Pro. I think it's a better overall package. I think technically the S22 may be superior, and also we have more pro kind of options. We've got director's view, we've got 8K video, we've got the much better long range zoom. But in terms of how I use my phone for portraits, for videos, dare I say even some cinematic mode shots, my preference would be the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. But what about you? Which one do you think came out on top? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And if you didn't like the video and think I got that completely wrong, then I'll take a sympathy subscribe instead. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.